Look at this. Oh my goodness. Oh my gracious. goodness. Well, we're, we're looking at Ryan Sieg, and uh, he's currently running fourth, but that's Josh Williams, who was asked, as I told you, to go to the garage for extending the caution. The debris came off his car. He has parked his number 92 at the start finish line, and oh, he, no. he's walking to the garage. Look at this. Is what this an exit. Wave and see you later. Oh, no. Well, I, I, he's not, he's not so, so happy now. They, they made him park his car because he extended the caution, like you said. They, they didn't do a good enough job repairing the front end of it, which was obvious uh, from here that they didn't do a good enough job keeping the tape on it. <clears throat> Here, here's and the then deal. they parked him, and he said, fine, I'll park it right here in the start-finish line. So, you, you know, you got that bear bond, and because it's so cold, that will just not stick as well in the colder conditions and it, and it blows off. So, you know, we saw him with it taped up, then we saw it all wrinkled, and, and then we saw it had disappeared. And then we got the caution for debris, and, you know, we assumed it was because uh, some of that bear bond had come off the 92. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> hey, I'm where, sorry. Where, where, That's a little funny. Hey, where, where I came from, you get into a fight because of that. <laughs> I gotta go soon. Regan, what's up? Well, you want to see what a pit stop looks like when you don't have your regular guys. And I think they did this just to get it out of the way so that they can they knew they were going to lose track position because more than half the field stayed out. But you can see these guys don't do this regularly. And it's been a it's been <laughs> it was a bit of a struggle. Some of uh, obviously Sheldon Creed's RCR guys with the wheel and uniforms. Uh, that just shows you how good the people that are trained to do this are. These guys are, are professionals. They're getting the job done. They're going to make sure they don't make any mistakes, everything tight. But uh, probably up into the 20-some seconds to change four tires when it usually takes about 12 to 14. Or it might, be, might have been 35 seconds. Yeah, maybe it was getting on up there. And just a reminder, some of the teams did arrive, but they have to get into their gear, get out to pit road. So it was a mixed bag there. I got a loose. I got a loose one. Just get a torque wrench and just do it right. Just get everything set right. And there's the crew. That's Zane Smith's team. That's that's a hustle. Here comes Kyle back yep. down to check out his wheel situation. I think I liked waiting to the end of the stage when my crew was going to be in on pit road and pitting then obviously for the guys racing for a championship get those stage points here at the end of the stage and then have your regular crew to come do your pit work. Now we had to get around the wrecker that's still there trying to hook up the 32 of Brett Holmes. It's kind of one issue after another Josh. Yeah, it's a little bit of an issue, as you can see down here. The wrecker is in the issue. Now, Kyle Busch, as you heard, came over the radio saying he had a loose wheel, so they knew they had to come back in and fix it. The problem is the wrecker getting the Ooh. truck behind him in his pit box. Not a smooth pit stop there, but with good reason, an issue in the box with the wrecker in the way, guys. In terms of Connor Daly, it's been a nightmare week. Couldn't qualify yesterday because of an electrical issue. And then today, they got it fixed, but it was all about trying to get the seat right. He had radio issues. When I asked him what he could expect out there, he told me, frankly, he doesn't know. He just says, when I get out there, I hope I have something I can work with. I think he has one cup start on the Roval at Charlotte uh, last fall. He practiced in pit road. I watched that car roll down there as Josh Sims was talking about him. Connor Daly needs to make sure that he capitalizes. And we've got a massive mis problem on the back of that car. I can't accelerate. The thing is rocking like crazy. Yeah, something's wrong with it. Jamie? Yeah, you heard the radio right there. He said something was wrong as soon as he rolled out on the track. He said it feels like something is bent in the rear end. And remember, Mike, they had issues yesterday, all kinds of weird things happening. So we'll see if he even is able to get up to speed here. Yeah, that thing's something's not happy there. Not at all. Larry, could something be locked down that that suspension's not a, not being allowed to travel? Well, it makes me feel like they've got something that's adjusted wrong. You have so many adjustments in those shocks, Mike. It makes me almost believe that they've got something way off an adjustment or maybe something that's not even connected. Oh, they're oh, in trouble. Kyle Busch. Around. Kyle Busch gets tagged. Down, gets in he got into Keselowski on that outside. Washed up right at the last Come minute. I was up. just fixing to say that group of cars right there were really getting after it. Kyle Busch is around backwards. Unbelievable. 
Still going backwards, Tony. Kyle was seventh at the time. And in a pretty tight pack of cars there. <laughs> what is he doing? Am I? Back he's, what, what he's doing, he's room. doing a great job at it, but so why get, is he doing it? Get caught up. Got to spin around and get caught up. You're going to need to get caught up to go a lap down Find here. Find a flat spot so you don't. Well, his tires are all up, so I. I... There, there he goes. Go. Wow. Oh, he's spinning out. Up into the wall goes Kyle Busch. And hard contact with the back of the car. The caution comes out with under seven laps to go in the stage. My goodness. Eight just got in there and spun around. Remember this eight car last year, Tyler Reddick driving and won the race. So Kyle Busch came into here expecting a good run. You see the safety vehicle actually chasing him. And look at the damage. Two things, heavy damage, but visible damage. A year ago, Alex Bowman, this is where he backed in, said it was one of the hardest hits he's ever taken, yet the car looked brand new and he could drive it off. Changes over the off season to the car. And not that Kyle Busch wanted to test it, but a good sign that the car did fold up and absorb some of that impact. But because of that, you see with the result, the result is a car that is severely damaged. It'll be shocking if they can keep this car going. They're going to be on the damage vehicle policy. Cannot allow the 12 to get a lap. Look at the five gain to the rear bumper. Oh, of the, 12. Oh, oh. And the five into the water. The barrier's right at the end of pit road. He slides into him, damage to the right front. That's going to bring the yellow out. They're going to have to throw the caution to be able to repair those barriers. Look how much he's gaining on him, and he has no choice but to turn right or run into the back of Blaney. He turns right and gets the end of the pit wall. Just so, to way too much speed here. You need to free me up if I'm going to, or tighten me up if I'm going to be up there racing for the lead. The drag race off of pit road. Look at it, three wide with William Byron there, but Logano uses that number one pit stall to his advantage, gains a couple of spots, and there's a fire, Rick, Yeah, on we pit got road. A, yeah, gas can has come out onto pit road, and we're seeing the fire there. It got drug out into the middle of pit road and a big fire. So this pit road stop has a few cars that come out, one of them being the 54 of Ty Dillon bringing the gas can along with him. It ignites and lights pit road on fire. Race is on for the lead right here, one and two. Oh, Chase does not get into turn one well at all. Oh, he and there are the fence. Hang on. Same thing. Went to run him up the racetrack. Still pushing, yeah. Turned him, William Byron, to the lead. Still pushing him. Well, All right, those of you scoring at home, how many saw that coming? I did. All of us. <laughs> uh, and this happy couple gets to go home together. Neither getting what they wanted. I want to go, she says. <laughs> she just said, I want to go home. Five tried to turn down knowing that the, the one was coming up the racetrack. You knew what the play he was going to do. Got into one another. Wrecked. Wow. Took Andy, each Mitchell. Other out. Andy Mitchell, great camera work. So if Ross doesn't come up that far trying to squeeze the five, do they both make it through the corner? They're both racing hard. They're both knowing exactly what each other's holding for cards, and they try to prevent it from happening, and they both wrecked. With all the cameras, how fun is that? It's fun for everybody but the team owner. <laughs> Back it down. Hey. Well, you, they're, they're the guys that you race with week in and week out, and you, you spend as much time with them as you do your family. So when you could accomplish something with by beating all the other teams as a group and being able to do the things that it, that it takes, uh-oh. Oh, now we, we got, got a, fire. a fire. That was impressive. Ah, uh, we found a good reason to never put those mud flaps on there again. <laughs> they're kindling. They're, they're not kindling. fireproof. He literally burned them down right there. They need a fire extinguisher right away ASAP. Both of them are on fire, Mike. Oh my gosh, you guys don't want to burn down this truck. I think it's too good. Not good. We have found a flaw in the mud flaps. I would, yeah, I would leave the area. Yes. If I were in there. A lot of celebrating going on, but also NASCAR trying to get to the situation. There it is, fire extinguisher. But he controlled the race. They did the details the way they needed to. That 
that's what helped them do that, right? There's other cars that could compete with the speed of the 20, but they executed the race on restarts, on pit road, and controlled it, and that's, man, now he just set the whole thing on fire. I get out. I get out on that one, that's big fire. I think that might be the right flaps. Oh no. It's really cool looking, but maybe not the safest, but that's okay. He reminds me of Zane Smith after the Craftsman Truck Series race at Coda. I mean, the, the racetrack is on fire over there. It's, it, this is it, like back to the field. It looks, I was gonna say, it looks like there's a DeLorean over there. <laughs> Could we get the AMR right, safety come on, team come on to back. victory lane? Come on back. And he needs to get out. Excessive celebration. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's cliche to say that John Hunter Nemechek was on fire tonight, but literally, John Hunter Nemechek on fire at Martinsville. Wins the race, gets the grandfather clock, and oh yeah, he's also your victor in the dash for cash. Give him $100,000. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports and NBC YouTube channel.